What's up guys, back with another one. Today we will be making a predictive search field, so you'll have your text field. Underneath we will put a repeater, don't worry if you never use repeaters, simple enough. We will populate that with whatever data we want, we will hide that, and then as you type whatever you want in the text field, we will filter the repeater down and only display the values that match whatever you're typing in. Let's go! This is what we're going to be building. It doesn't look like much, but essentially this is a text box. Underneath it, there is a repeater containing a bunch of values. And as you type in, uh, the repeater is filtered and only shows the values that match whatever you're typing in the box. So for this exercise, I'm using uh, this list of basketball players. So there are 25 names. Um, if we look at some, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan. And let's just test it out. So Michael Jordan. LeBron James, Kobe Bryant. So as you can see, if you just sort of have one character and it matches uh, all the names that contain it, but then if you sort of start typing, typing down, it, it filters down to, to the characters that you have in there. Right, let's get into Azure and build this bad boy. So drop in a text field. This uh, this will be a search bar. I'm not going to style it here, um, so it's all going to look pretty ugly, but it's uh, it's going to be functional. I'm not going to do anything with it just yet. Let's drop in a repeater. Repeater lives here. It looks like a little spreadsheet kind of thing. Um, don't worry about these values right now. They're coming from from this column here, but we'll we will change that in a bit. Uh, let's go into the repeater. So just double click in there and let's style it to. Well, not really style it, but at least sort of make the size uh, uh, match the text field. And just to see what the text would look like uh, uh, when we fill it, fill it in, let's just sort of type this in and uh, format it however we like. So left align it, maybe give it a little bit of padding. Um, and that looks fine. Now let's just delete that text. But now in all of the fields in the repeater, that's how the text is going to be going to be formatted. Anyway, um, so now we need to f we need to uh, um, fill in all the names here. But if we just rename this name for now, oh, um, and then one of the great things about this is actually the fact that you can simply copy things from a spreadsheet uh, or, or, or an Excel sheet and paste them in here without too much effort. So now we have uh, you have this here. Um, and obviously, because we don't want this to be showing right now, we just want it to, to appear once you start typing, we will hide it. Actually, uh, let's just go back into the repeater and call this value, for example, just uh, just good practice. So now what it's saying um, is uh, on load, you're setting value, so that field here, to item name. And item name is this and if you rename this to title um it gets renamed there but let's just keep it as name okay now next thing we need to do is we need to tell it that when we start typing we want this to show okay so once uh, you select the text field let's go into interactions and let's find text changed show hide and repeater should probably name it but in this exercise you don't really need it no need to add animations i think if you do want to add an animation of the repeater sliding down or, or fading in i would suggest putting it in a dynamic panel first just because sometimes it starts sort of getting a bit uh, uh, um, a bit funny with it um right so now we're saying on text change show repeater um and let's enable the claw uh, a case sorry so if you're going to uh, click that little button there and we add a little, bo a little bit of logic. So we say that text on widget, on this widget, does not equal to nothing. We show this repeater. So basically we're saying that if we type uh, something in there and there is text there, it shows. And then let's copy this and paste it and just reverse the logic. So say if text on this does equal to nothing, we want to hide the repeater. And let's just see if it works. Here we go. So whatever you type in, the repeater appears there. But if you delete everything, it hides. Perfect. First, uh, first bit done. Okay. Now we need to add um, a little bit of code in there, and I've got this saved here. Uh, I'll add this to the video so you can just copy and paste it. But essentially, what this is doing is it's taking 
uh, column name. So this will be um, value because that's where we put the uh, put the names in. We convert it to lowercase and then we compare it. This is the comparison uh, a little bit of code. We compare it to whatever is typed in into the, the, the text box that we've created. Okay, let's copy this. Uh, show repeater and then we need to add another action there at the bottom you can scroll down and there are there are a bunch of actions for repeaters right here but right now we're going to do use add filter uh, select your repeater you can name it as filter it doesn't really matter what you name it click into that little FX bit there um, and now first but the first thing that we need to do is add a variable so local variable and uh, uh, text on this widget, uh, widget <laughs> is fine. So essentially, uh, we're saying that whatever we type into this box is being stored in a local variable called lvar1. And then here at the top, let's just put this in and re Did I select the dot. Um, add in whatever you called your column. So we called it a value, I think. I'll just double check once it's done. Um, and now it should work let me just double check that it is value oh nope it's name so let's call this value then. actually no because we called the called this value let's keep this as name and here in in the interaction i will change that to name to avoid confusion let's check it out okay so we have those names so Kobe Bryant, here we go, Michael Jordan, and as you can see, even though I'm typing in uh, lowercase letters, letters, it's, 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 it's matching the values, and that's why we converted them in the, into lowercase in this, um, in this little bit of code. This is what's going on here, because otherwise they would just, they would, they would try to match them like for like. Um, so this is fine, uh, but one more thing that we need to do is, um, as you can see, if I type Michael Jordan or Michael, it does come up, but say if I type in James for LeBron James, LeBron James is there, but James isn't coming up. So we need to change one little thing in, the, in that piece of code. Let me show you what it is. So right here, we've got equals equals. We need to change that to greater than. And now it should work. And actually, just as a as good measure, we need to add remove all filters once you once you remove the text. It doesn't really matter in this exercise because there's only one filter, but it's just a good good practice. Okay, let's go in. Let's check. So LeBron James coming up, and now if you type in James, James is uh, uh, brings up LeBron James as well. Um, and obviously you can use whatever and whatever values you you, you need. Um, it's very useful when creating search bars or, or uh, map prototypes and stuff like that. Um, I hope this was useful, easy to follow, and thanks for watching.